So I want to rewatch Blizzard Arena because here's, in my head, here's how it went down most of the time. One of the one of the things I noticed throughout the entire series here with Angry Titans is Angry Titans were rotating around like motherfuckers, just r- just running around the map, just like going here, going there, going round, going up, going top, going down, going here, going back around here, there, uh, da, ba, da, ba, da, and then they'd eventually land somewhere. And Avast calls it the probability machine, where the more you rotate around the higher your chance of getting, like, hit by a Bionade, or getting randomly sniped by Alarm if he's on Zen, or, I don't fucking know, getting, like, eventually you're gonna get EMP'd, or maybe, like, just the spam kills you or something. It's just a probability machine. Their rotations took a long time, but also, Alarm hit a shit ton of Bionades. So, when when I'm watching this back, I want to see how Alarm hit so many Bionades. Like, why... Why was Emil not able to eat them? Because this makes sense. They rotate up top, push them off the high ground. Nasa's only got 30%, because they've done a decent job at maneuvering around. So now they want to drop, and they want to engage. But for some reason, they're taking forever. I mean, what are they doing? Why are they waiting around? This is like watching Korea. So you take at least an extra five seconds. Rotate in, and that's a three-person Bionade, immediately. Are they... Are they tracking Emil's... Matrix? Fuck me. Matrix is impossible to see. No idea. No idea. It seems like as you're coming around a corner, that might be the prime time to be defense matrixing in case there's a Bionade coming in. But these Bionades basically won them Blizzard World. Am I going to be in the US in December? Uh, not late December. I'm not going to be here for Christmas, Milky. Because I'll go back to see my parents. But I will be here early December. Avast is a really good caster. It might be in Cali for Christmas. Fuck. I'm like 90% sure I will be here for Christmas. But I'll probably be here up until like the 18th. I might be back for New Year. If you're here for New Year, I might come back for that. I might get fucked up for New Year. Overwatch World Cup teams can have as many coaches as they want if they pay for them to get there themselves, I think. I think Blizzard only funds one coach, one GM, one community lead to get to BlizzCon. Alright, so, let's look again. So they go through bottom. Nace doesn't really manage to charge that much EMP. He certainly could be more aggressive than this. I think he's expecting them to go up top. They go bottom, so he can't really do much. Bionade comes out. And they're going to hide until the Bionade goes off. Bionade is now off. So now they come back in again. Losish nearly gets hacked. Rotates his shield in time. They get EMP'd. They die. Next fight. They go bottom again. I don't know why they go bottom again, rather than trying to push them off the high ground. In my head, pushing them off the high ground would be a better option. Again, they get bionated. It's like... Alarm throws bionade just as they, just as they move forward. They get a hack on Fat. Fat gets naded. They nano. Spectral gets bashed. They shatter. They kill everybody. But they just can't get in position. And and also, if if you know that they're gonna, if alarm has if alarm doesn't land this bionade, say say alarm has not landed that. Ignore the purple. If they drop here, 
If Fusion Uni drop this aggressively onto you, you can take that fight. As Angry Titans, you should be looking to take the fight head on and punish Changsik for just dropping down like this. Like, there should be a Discord orb on Changsik, like a little, little purple Discord orb on him, and he should be getting rinsed right now. Because he's got no D.Va to protect him. He, he's not got bubbles. They're just dropping down. Angry Titans can really fuck him up. They should be anticipating that. And instead, for whatever reason, Angry Titans are insisting on getting to the point. So they just get broadsided. They actually get booped in. But Angry Titans are just backing off the whole time. They look scared. Oh, and Emil just gets bullied. Bullied. So, Angry Titans have now taken the high ground. So they've they've taken the time that Emil got staggered to, to push Fusion Uni off the high ground. Or well, Fusion Uni weren't even on the high ground because they were killing Emil, but it ensures that they can't retake the high ground. When Emil gets back, he gets slept, then he gets hacked. So Nace manages to get up to his EMP again. Throws it in, cancels it. See if he can bait see if he can bait anything out. This this is beautiful. So Shatter comes out, forces everybody back. It the Shatter from Lulsish makes sure that these guys can't uh, can't push forwards. They all have to hide behind the shield. In the meantime... Oh, wait. I think, uh, actually, he tries to shatter the Sombra. But anyway, it still forces people to be passive. So, I think Lulsish is going for the hack here. Uh, Lulsish is, like, gonna shatter Naist, force him to use this translocator, and then they're gonna come in with the trance. So they're forcing Naist's hand. Naist can't just keep throwing these translocators again and again. If he just keeps throwing translocators, eventually a fox is going to uh, panic pop. Or he's not going to realize when he actually is going for the EMP. That kind of shit. So at the moment, it's only on like a two second cooldown. You can just keep throwing translocator, deleting it. Throw translocator, delete it. Throw translocator, de delete it. Lulsish goes for the shatter on Naist. Forces him to use translocator. He uses EMP, a fox is hidden around the corner and just flies in. It's like, this is a really nice play by Angry Titans. They managed to kill Nice. Then they're locked up in the grav. They use Soundbarrier. They use Bubble. They isolate Snillo, kill him. A fox dies, but trades for Changsik. Bernard gets killed. They just play together, they clean up. So that's that's a beautiful play. <laughs> okay, that's a that's a tweet for sure. That's a fucking tweet. I'm a cocky American who failed to live up to his mouth. <laughs> okay. Vancouver Titans couldn't force Angry Titans to disband. At most, they could force them to change their name for contenders. But that would be Blizzard that made that decision anyway. And normally, they only care if you've actually got a, a place name in your name because it makes you seem more official. That's a really nice shatter from Changshik. They get they get over aggro. Lulsish goes for a pin, which he probably needs a bubble for. Probably should have started a little closer to the grav. Probably should have worked his way around the grav first. So the bubble is late. Lulsish gets booped. And then the shatter comes in. So sloppy sloppy engagement from Angry Titans. Fusion Uni punish it well. 
But anyway, that's what I wanted to... That's what I really wanted to look at was that. Uh, and then how it works on the, the defense as well. Oh, no. On defense, they just had this comp, didn't they? Yeah, this is what they defended both Horizon and and Blizzard World with. Which, I don't really mind this comp. It's got so much poke. But when the ults come up, it's, uh, or it's nowhere near as useful. So you have to win the neutral engagement. Which means, despite the fact you have a D.Va, you have to wait until you've poked a lot and then actually push at some point. Which is strange, I think. You have to ensure that you win the neutral. I don't think you can really rely on, on picks from the Ash. I mean, they get a pick on Kaka that time, but they were probably going to win the neutral anyway just by pressuring down Shanksik. So... Bob's in. Once Lulsish, Lulsish gets back as well, they can... I don't know why they bobbed there before Lulsish was back, honestly. They should have waited for that, but... A lot of pressure on Lulsish's shield, but same for Changsik. Just so much poke from both teams. Relies on Emil to hit his shots, but Emil does have pretty good, good aim, actually. There's so much poke from Ash. I think Ash is actually starting to find her place in the meta as a real poke heavy uh, hero. And this this is the real problem with not having a diva is you don't have the bomb to try and first of all eat the grav. But okay, that doesn't happen that often. We didn't see an eat and grav all day, as far as I can remember. But mostly it's for defensive self destructs. Like defensive self destructs are so powerful. If they had had a meal there to do a defensive self destruct, I don't think there's any way this this fight goes so badly. Because it would have forced Fusion to have much more passive positioning and they wouldn't have been able to land that Shatter on Erky. But also, probably they should have tried to... Uh, oh, Fat was only on 98% when Erky died. I was going to say they should have pr probably tried to beat the Shatter, but... They didn't have it available. Ah... Uh. But okay, that could have worked. You just gotta play a bit smarter around the grav. Oh really? Banar ain't one? Oh, fair enough. Maybe there were a couple of eaten gravs. I didn't realize. What's the deal with Ash Goats? It just applies a shit ton of pressure to the, to the Reinhardt. So it makes it pretty difficult to take neutral engagements without ultimates. Uh... It's a little slow because all the Ash can do is really poke and it's reliant on high ground. So you can't play it on all maps. But if you've got high ground that actually gives a really good view of everything, then it gives you an opportunity to pressure the supports whilst also applying a shit ton of poke to the to the shield. Okay, anyway, this is this is just kind of destruction and then you see a similar thing on Horizon where they run the same composition, but they get destroyed. But what I do want to look at on Horizon is again the rotations from Angry Titans because they are pretty slow. And it's not as bad to be slow here when you're running default Goats v Goats. Uh, at least there isn't an EMP being charged all the time when you're just sat passive. But uh, it's still not great. Because it's not like they're even trying to... Look like here, like like this play. So like a lot of teams will look like they're pushing underneath. They'll wait for the enemy team to drop onto them. And then this team will back off slightly and then try and fight. So you like, you go forwards, then you, you back it up, and then you rush back into them. And, and at that point, this team has like gone in thinking you were going to come here. Then they get suckered in a little bit, and then they get overwhelmed. Uh, that's the idea of, like, like baiting them into dropping onto you and then fucking them. But th here, they bait them into dropping down, and then just rotate to take the high ground. Which is a super slow way of playing. And the whole of Fusion are able to get back onto the high ground 
by that point anyway. And then they just get scattered by boops all over the place, and Lulcic gets focused down and they die. Whereas they could have just fought them on the low ground. And you've got a big advantage. Like, let, me, let me see if I can... Let's see if we can pause it when they actually drop. When, when teams drop, they often fuck up. Like here, if you get a Discord Orb onto Changshik, you can probably do a shit ton of damage to Changshik. Because you've got all six of your guys down here, clumped up, doing huge damage. And the others, like Snillo is doing zero damage. Alarm doesn't have the greatest sightlines in the world onto all of you. He can see some of you, but not all of you. Naist is going to be kind of dropped down here because you're because you're going to try and push people off this platform and then fuck them up. And Banar can only damage some of you as well. So Fusion Uni can't actually focus targets that well because you're all in a big clump. But you can focus Changshik really well. And you've got a Discord Orb on him because you know that he has to drop his shield as he drops. Otherwise, he's just going to plop on the floor like a potato. So you've got a really good opportunity here to Discord Changshik and, and mess him up. And instead, they rotate. It's super obvious and Fusion do the same. And you're just back in the same position. You've just wasted 30 seconds. So... And then you're trying to fight on tiny little platforms. I mean, this is so narrow. Of course you're going to get booped off. The only way that play works is if you end up in control of this whole high ground for free. And even then, you're playing pretty slowly. Why not just take the fight? You scared? Really? No, you can surely take that fight, Dream. The Rhine Cleave kills you? What, if you... Okay, wait there, wait there. You're saying if you push out here, and they drop on you, and you take the fight here, that Angry Titans wouldn't be able to kill Changshik in time? Why do you get destroyed? Just because you get stuck in that choke? It doesn't work the same on the other... Well, I guess it doesn't work the same on the other side because you don't get clumped in. I would have thought you had the advantage there. How do you not manage to overwhelm the Rhine before he just swings into all of you? If you, get the, if you get the Discord orb on him... I mean, you'll have tried it in scrim, so I believe you, but it doesn't seem to really make sense to me that you wouldn't be able to just burst the bubble, stun him, Discord him, and kill him. All right, fair enough. All right, so Angry Titans take the high ground again. They get booped off and booped in. Look at that by Bernard. Bernard boops Emil and Durki off the high ground and manages to boop Lulsa Shing. All with the same thing. And then Spectral just gets roasted because he doesn't have any shield. Probability machine, as Avast would say. Long rotations. Not playing the point. Things go wrong. And they don't, uh, they don't seem like they're ready for shit to happen. Like, Erky doesn't bash, which I don't really know why. Like, none of them know that Banar is there. Everyone's just looking forwards. Which seems weird to me that they they're not they don't they don't know where people are coming from. Because Oki could bash Bernard there, and then Bernard would get pressured back, and you'd have a bit of an advantage in the fight. NA should have a ridiculous Overwatch World Cup team this year, but um, I don't know if everyone's going to play. And I could genuinely have the best team this year. So, 
Sleepy would be their flex support. I don't think I would put Blase on there, but maybe. I think I'd have like probably hydration or something. I don't know. Am I am I forgetting some kind of stellar brick player? Take a look at this again. So they're trying to go underneath. They've put no pressure on Banar. So Banar's got all of this for free. Now he gets discarded. But they're not really doing anything. They know exactly where their movements are because Banar's down there. They could have poked Banar away. They could have sat there, poked Banar away, and then gone to make a play. When Fusion don't have the same amount of vision. But now, rotating to the left. Now coming back, rotating to the right. Six holds up for both teams. They bust through the choke point pretty aggressively with their rally. They get, uh, yeah, they, they get fucked. They got grabbed. The trance was there. They get a boop and a bomb and a pin. They just grab them when they come in. But they've they've had two no, three fights at this point. Three fights. And there's so they're gonna get four fights in four minutes, which is very slow pace. Very slow pace. Will the diva nerves impact goats? Nope, don't think so. I mean NA's World Cup team this year should essentially just be San Francisco Shock with um, with well, I mean Sleepy used to be in the San Francisco Shock it's like four players from San Fran with a Brig Brigitte and, a, and Space So what happens in this fight? I, I was thinking about the World Cup team instead. That's a really nice gravy. I don't know whether that was intentional at all. Maybe it was. Let's take a look at this one again. Mm, don't know. It looks like he's just trying to matrix shield, but I'm not sure. When grab is up, all Bernard does is play to eat. I'm sure it was intentional. It's just like showing himself somewhere on the left and then coming in. I don't know. My understanding of Diva Mind Games is not good. These guys are fucking operating on the seventh dimension, as far as I'm concerned. He's well inside Spectral said though. <laughs> Okay, so very easy. What about underwater Mahjong? I don't think they're quite playing that yet. What was the other thing? Oh, so the other thing they did was just this. Did they did they try and push underneath on the right at any point? Did they just try to push this way, where Chang Shik is holding at the moment? Up 
but they're creating their items right now, but not giving them free domain. Titans are just taking so much time. Once again, I, I go back, are we, you know, wh why are these rotations taking so long? You need to be fighting on the point. I think Carter's like 60 seconds. Anyway. So, you know, I think Fusion played a bit too, uh, too scared. Uh, sorry. Tit Angry Titans played a bit too scared. Um, even early on in the series. They got fucked by Bionades and playing too passively on, uh, on Blizzard World. Uh, but the main thing that I came out of this with was, holy hell, what a choke from British Hurricane. Crazy choke from British Hurricane. So yeah, there you go. And also, the Fusion Uni look really good. All right, they look so much better at land than they have done online. Their players are playing with low ping, so it makes sense, but... It's more like... The coordination is better as well, they all look more focused. I, I don't mean that as in like, I can see their faces, they look focused, I just mean... They, uh, they're much tighter, more coordinated, less sloppy, less playing for clutches. 